Hello everyone, welcome back, welcome, welcome for another interesting ASMR with facts video. Today we're gonna discuss about the Polish-Lithuanian Commonwealth. Polish-Lithuanian Commonwealth and unveil some interesting facts about well what was this Commonwealth it's formerly the Polish Lithuanian Commonwealth was known as the Kingdom of Poland and the Grand Duchy of Lithuania. So, Kingdom and Grand Duchy of Lithuania, or simply Poland and Lithuania, or Poland be Lithuania. This was called a federation and was ruled by a common monarch in a real union who was both King of Poland and Grand Duchy of Lithuania. The official state name was Kingdom of Poland. In the 17th century and later it was also known as the Most Serene Commonwealth of Poland. The name in the Western Europeans were often simplified to the name of Poland. In terms of size, it was one of the largest and most populous countries in the 16th and 17th century. It, at its largest extent, which we have here on the map, in the early 17th century, the Commonwealth covered 1 million square kilometers. So, 1 million square kilometers. How it starts? Well, the Commonwealth was established by the Union of Lublin, Lublin, in 1569. Here on this map, it's the maximum extent imposed on the present-day national borders. So, like you said, you see, it covers most part of the current Poland, Lithuania, Latvia, some part of Estonia, Belarus, and the most parts of Uk Ukraine, and also a small part from Moldavia and Romania, or at that point Romania didn't exist, it, it was only Moldavia, Transylvania, and Wallachia. All right, the economy of the Commonwealth was predominantly based on agricultural output. Agriculture output. Through there was an abundance of artisan workshops and manufactories. There were some notable industries like paper mills industries, leather, tanneries, 
ironworks, glassworks, brickyards, and foraging or furna. Some major cities were home to craftsmen, travelers, and clockmakers. The majority of industries and trades were concentrated in the kingdom of Poland. So here we have the industries. The Grand Duchy of Lithuania was a more ruler place. And its economy was driven by cloth making and farming. Farming. Right. All right. Now, the next chapter is about some key facts. So first, it's where it starts Union of Lublin. 1569. The Union was established to strengthen the military and political ties between the Kingdom of Poland and the Grand Duchy of Lithuania. It aimed to create a unified and more powerful state to counter external threats. Another key fact, dual monarchy while the Commonwealth was a federation, it retained separate political and legal system for the both countries. Each retained its own army, treasury and administration. Another key fact is religious tolerance. Well, the Commonwealth was known for its relatively high degree of religious tolerance during a time when religious conflicts were often very common in Europe. The Warsaw Confederations from 1573 granted religious freedom to nobles and their followers, recognizing Catholicism, Calvinism, Lutheranism and Orthodox Christianity. The political system was characterized by a unique form of elective monarchy and a strong role of nobility, known as Slachta. Slachta. It's it's as in Slach. Slachta. The king was elected by nobles and the nobility held significant political power and influence. The political philosophy of golden liberty emphasized the right and privilege of nobility. and it contributed to a system where the nobles had considerable influence over political decisions, but also led to political instability and hindered central authority. The Commonwealth had a powerful military power, particularly it 
Knights Cavalry, which was known as the Winged Hussars, Winged Hussars, the military strength of the Commonwealth was a significant factor for our ability to resist external threats. Threats. So we have military power. Well, the Commonwealth experienced a series of partitions in the late 18th century, during which was divided among its powerful neighbors, Russia, Prussia, which is was here, and Austro-Hungarian Empire. The final partition in 795 marked the end of the Polish-Lithuanian Commonwealth as an independent state. These were the key facts. Now, let's switch to the less known fact. And first less known facts, it's the Jewish population. The Commonwealth had one of the largest and most significant Jewish population. Jewish population. Jewish, Jewish found refugee in the Commonwealth and played important roles in its economy and culture. However, the relations between the Jewish and Christian population was complex, with periods of tolerance and outbreaks of violence and even discrimination. Another less known fact, its constitution of 3 May 1791. This constitution is often considered one of the first modern constitutions in Europe and a pioneering document in the history of constitutional law. The purpose was to strengthen the central authority and introduce other reforms. The Noble Republic, another less known fact. The political structure of the Commonwealth was sometimes referred as the Noble Republic. Noble Republic, due to the dominant role of the nobility in political life. However, this nobility was not a hereditary aristocracy, rather it was a class of landowner titled and nobility could be attained through various means, including military service, royal grants and bribes. Dutch Ducky of Courland and Semigallia. Another less known fact, the Ducky of Courland and Semigallia, located in the territory of modern-day Latvia here and part of the western Lithuania was a semi-independent ducky under the suzerainty of Polish-Lithuanian Commonwealth. It was ruled by the Duke of Kurland who were often elected from a German nobility. Another less known fact, 
its military innovation. The Commonwealth's military, especially the winged hussars, they were very known for their prowess. However, less highlighted is the fact that Commonwealth was an early adopter of military reforms, including the creation of a standing army. Standing army. The infantry included four hind mercenaries, and there were attempts to modernize military and tactics and equipment. Another less known fact is the political complexity. The political structure of the Commonwealth, with its elective monarchy and liberum veto, led to a highly de decentralized and chaotic system. The complexity contributed to the challenges the Commonwealth faced during the times in responding to the external threats and lead to internal conflicts. It was a model. The Commonwealth played a model role for the European diplomacy and conflicts. It formed early alliances with various European powers, including France and the Ottoman Empire, and was involved in, in wars against the Ottoman Turks and Moscovy. Moscovy. But what was the downfall and the ending? Well, the Polish-Lithuanian Commonwealth came to an end through a series of partitions carried out by its neighboring powers, Russia, Prussia, and Austro-Hungarian or Habsburg Empire. The partition were a result of political, military, and territorial pressure to aim, aim to weaken the Commonwealth, and they ultimately led to a complete dissolution of the state. The dissolution of the Polish-Lithuanian Commonwealth had a profound consequences for the people of the region. It sparked a sense of national awakening and the desire for independence, which ultimately played a role in the restoration of an independent Poland. Independent Poland after the First World War in 1918. Stop. And here were the most important key facts and the less known facts about this very interesting independent state or B state or let's say small empire. Polish-Lithuanian Commonwealth. Thank you very much for being with me also today. And until next time, I wish you all the best like always.